Hi guys, it's Denver, and to kick off our Nintendo Switch release day for Stardew Valley, I thought we'd do a big giveaway to celebrate. To enter the giveaway, just like this video, subscribe if you aren't already, click the notification bell, and then leave a comment down below letting me know if you would rather have the $20 Nintendo eShop gift card or Stardew Valley for Steam if you don't have a Nintendo Switch yet. Hurry up and do that now and get ready to learn all there is to know about spring in Stardew Valley. I'll announce the winner of my live stream on Saturday morning at about 11 a.m. Central Time. Hope to see you there. For a seemingly simple farming game, Stardew Valley is surprisingly complex with many different strategies and different paths you can take as you progress through the game. Some people even get so stressed out due to the game offering so many choices that they put it down and never return. Whether your goal is to build relationships, stockpile gold, or level up to improve your skills, spring is the first and most important season in Stardew Valley, and this guide will give you all the basic and advanced information you need to be successful. If you find that you enjoy this video, consider clicking like and subscribe down below. The moment you wake up on your first day of spring, you'll notice a gift was left for you on the floor of your home. These 15 parsnip seeds are going to be your first source of farming income. Farming is a staple of Stardew Valley and will be your main source of income for quite a while. Farming requires a hoe to till, seeds to plant, a watering can for watering of course, and some optional fertilizers that we will get into later. Your day begins at 6 a.m. and ends at precisely 2 a.m. So for these first few hours, work at slowly clearing some space for your first farm plot. But be careful, your energy will drop very quickly as you adjust from your cozy desk job to your new laborious lifestyle. Almost everything you do in Stardew Valley will drain your energy. Even preparing your plot for these first 15 parsnip seeds will cost quite a bit and limit what you can accomplish on the first day. To prepare for this, you'll have to eat and drink a lot of what you find in the ground and in trash cans around Pelican Town so you have the energy to prepare yourself for summer. Some of the goals you will try to achieve in your first spring are 1. Collecting 300 wood to repair the wooden beach bridge, giving you access to beach forage such as clams, coral, and high-priced sea urchin. Number 2. Purchasing the 2,000 gold backpack upgrade, giving you 10 additional storage slots. Number three, reaching at least level 50 in the mines, collecting as much copper and iron as you can for sprinklers and upgrading your tools. And the most important goal, number four, saving up 10 to 15,000 gold in preparation for summer. The more gold, the better. These are lofty goals, but do not fear as it isn't nearly as difficult as it might seem, even if you are brand new to Stardew Valley. After your first parsnips are planted, head to Pierre's general store in town to grab a few extra seeds with your starting money. I always buy parsnips for that fast gold income, but many veterans of the game suggest cauliflower, potatoes, or even green beans to be your best bet. Parsnips are my go-to because you will not have scarecrows to protect your crops at the very beginning. I'm not a big fan of losing an expensive cauliflower crop or two, nor do I like to wait 12 days, almost half the month, waiting on a few cauliflowers to finish. Potatoes are a bit faster and give a decent return. Green beans are a repeat grower and that you plant them once and they continue to produce throughout spring. There may be a best choice, but any of the above options will work just fine. Now get back to your farm and plant your new seeds in the ground as well. I use a 3x3 plot pattern for all of my crops, but you can develop your own successful system. Plot grids divisible by 3 will always be extremely beneficial in a short while due to quality sprinkler access. Your crops are all in the ground and watered, but your day has just begun. Travel around town and scour the land for any forgeable items. You'll want to keep an eye out for items such as horseradishes, daffodils, leeks, dandelions, and especially down at the south side of the map, you will find spring onions. The first four items mentioned can soon be deposited in the community center for a reward. But for now, keep them around to eat or to sell. I tend to sell my horseradishes and daffodils, but eat the leeks and dandelions due to the great cost to energy ratio. As my spring onion collection builds up though, I sell all that I can to afford more seeds to plant more crops. Spring onions sell for very little and therefore should be kept at all times or just until you collect salmon berries on day 15 through 18. All goods found on the beach can be sold immediately. With the extra time I have after foraging through town, I chop down as many trees as I can. I avoid any unnecessary stones, use the scythe to clear any grass in my way, and I make sure to save all goods that fall from chopped down trees to make field snacks 
and fertilizer. Gather as much wood as you can on this first day and use the first 50 wood to build the chest. Place this chest near your storage bin for now for quick access in and out for selling. Eat and shop until your energy is dropping close to zero. Be very careful not to hit zero as it will give you an energy penalty the following day. And then drop all your stuff in your chest. If you haven't yet, check the TV every day for the weather and luck and then head to bed for the night. Day two through four is much like day one. Your priorities are to tend to your crops, forage, chop wood to reach 300 as soon as possible, fish, and use your gold profits to buy new seeds to plant. Once you reach 300 wood, repair the beach bridge and sell all the ocean goods you can find to Willie, or just place it in the storage bin. Also, you want to visit Willie as soon as you receive his letter in the mail. He will give you a free fishing rod, and you can begin making a fair sum of gold as you increase your fishing skill. Fishing will be quite difficult for most of you at first, and that's okay. There are some fish that are worth more than others, but my suggestion is just pick your favorite place, either the town's rivers, the, the lake, or the ocean, and just get to fishing. Use whatever fish you need to refill your energy, and then sell the rest to Willie or put it in the storage bin. Use all those profits to purchase new seeds. Cauliflower is the most expensive, but will give you a large amount of gold in return. Potatoes are cheaper, but will have a chance of producing an extra potato. Either way, stick with either of these two crops from now on since you can protect them with scarecrows. Scarecrows cover about eight tiles in all directions, so place them appropriately so crows don't eat into your profit. Day 5 is a big day as it allows access to the mines. Crops and fishing are great for bringing in large amounts of early gold, but mining should be a priority as well from here on out. My personal goal is to gain 5 to 10 levels in the mine every time I go. I make sure to have enough food, my sword, and my pickaxe. Leave as much space as you can in your backpack for all the stone, gems, ore, and other goods you will certainly come across. If you need to trash an item, grass is always the first to go. Every five levels unlocks an elevator stop for you, so feel free to stop every fifth level and head back out to fish, forage, or if you're feeling social, build some relationships with the townspeople. Getting to know the townspeople will offer you information and stories, finding a possible spouse, and if you get to know them well enough, you will receive items in the mail from them. A spouse will also help you out around the farm, as well as keep you company, but we'll save that for later. So those first five days are huge. Nail these and you will be set in Stardew Valley for the rest of your life, or at least until year three when grandpa comes back to judge your sins. Check the calendar at the store as often as you need to remember birthdays which gives a bonus boost to relationships if given the proper gift, and to check for festivals. Since strawberries at the Egg Festival on Day 13 are a big topic to consider in Spring Year 1, I'll tell you what I do, and you can make up your mind since you have followed my orders for too long now. I ignore them. Some people will save up as much as they can for the festival, and buy as many strawberries as possible, and there's not a thing wrong with that. It can actually be very lucrative. What I do instead is put all that money towards crops as soon as I get it. I don't have to wait until the 13th. I don't have to lose days doing nothing with my money. I just spend it on crops, I plant them, and I get those crops sooner to continue the process. I don't mind watering tens or hundreds of crops, but if that's too boring for you, keep digging up the mines or causing a mass genocide on the fish. Both are worthy ventures. If you choose not to buy strawberries, consider buying just one pack since in Stardew, it is smart to collect and save at least one of every single item. Chests are cheap, so just keep hoarding. So you're nearing the end of spring, you're fishing, farming, foraging and mining skills are climbing. 
Your relationships are blossoming. You have upgraded a few tools, maybe, starting with the watering can first, hopefully. Now you just need to get as deep in the mines as you can and save as much money as you can. Be sure not to plant crops too close to the end of the season, as they will disappear and be a total waste if you can't harvest them before the switch to summer. If you are a master and you find yourself with way too much money, wood, and stone, go ahead and treat yourself with a nice coop, barn, or even a stable to start moving around town quickly. Know that all of these will cost several thousand cutting into your summer crop profits. Also know that none of these are ever needed in Stardew, but are a huge fun part of the game. Plus, you'll definitely want some friendly companions around to give your farm a little more life. As a teacher, thank you guys for allowing me to help you out and share my love of the game to you, whether you're young or old, new or veteran. Also, as a teacher, I have to forget important details. So feel free to let people know down in the comments any good ideas, any strategies, or just anything important that I might have missed. Of course, if you like this video, toss a like my way and consider subscribing to join the best community on YouTube. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.